Now, how you make money in old school RuneScape has gotta be one of the most widely discussed topics in the entire game, and that's because, well, everything revolves around money. To get stronger, you need better gear, and to get better gear, you need more money. Now, in the early game, you don't really need that much money to keep yourself going, but once you move into the mid-game, gear starts costing a lot more, mid-game content starts to have stronger monsters and higher requirements, and thus requires you to start actually earning a significant amount of money. Uh, so today I thought we would go over some of the best mid-game money makers because really these have changed a lot over the last couple of years. Now these are probably not going to be earning you millions of GP every hour, but they're a good thing to work towards and will definitely help you earn some money in the mid-game. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. As always, if you do, always appreciate a like in the video. Helps with a ton. Thanks again and let's get started. Now generally it can be kind of hard to make money in the mid game with just purely combat. There aren't too many bosses that are available and usually the more lucrative monsters require higher stats. However, one of the most underrated places to make money in the mid game I think is the Shade Catacomb. In the Shade Catacomb there are different shades you can kill and they will always drop a Shade Remain and these are worth a significant amount of money. As players will burn these to get rewards as well as clue scrolls there is actually a significant amount of demand for them now. For example, if you kill Fire Shades, they will always drop the remains, which are worth somewhere between 3 and 5,000 each, uh, depending on the day, which adds up very quickly. Now, to get into the Shades of Morton Underground, there is a hard fire making requirement. For Fire Shades, you'll need 65 fire making, uh, which shouldn't be too hard to get on a mid level account. Now, the Shades aren't particularly strong, they don't really have any defensive stats, uh, but if you do have access to something like an Abyssal Whip, that will make the kills very quick. Uh, one tip I would recommend is getting access to the gold coffin. To get this, you simply just have to buy a gold lock from the ground exchange and combine it with a broken coffin, which you can get from an NPC called Damp, which is located right at the entrance of the Shade Catacomb. The coffin will allow you to extend your trips because you can put the Shade Remains directly in there. Super handy. Uh, if you take advantage of all of this, at the current rate, you can make around 500 or 600k per hour, which is incredibly good. If the value of the Shade Remains go up, you can sometimes make up to 1 mil per hour. Pretty damn good for a mid-level moneymaker. Now, next to bear, we have a RuneCraft moneymaker. Now, we all know that RuneCrafting is incredibly profitable, at least when you get a high RuneCrafting level. Uh, but what about the mid-game? Uh, well, there actually is at least one good option, and that is crafting double cosmic runes. The requirements for this are not nearly as high as other RuneCraft moneymakers. To craft double nature runes, you only need 59 RuneCrafting, uh, which is significantly lower. There are quite a few other soft requirements for this. For example, to do this effectively, you need access to fairy rings as well as a teleport location close by. Uh, probably one of the best teleport locations, at least at the lower level, is either a salve graveyard teleport in your POH or alternatively using the Necklace of Passage to go to the Wizard's Tower. Both fairly good options. Now, the amount of money that you can make crafting cosmic runes is going to vary a bit on how many of these soft requirements you have as you level up your account further, get access, for example, to a higher agility level, closer teleports to fairy rings and stuff like that, your money per hour is going to go up. That said, at 59 runecrafting, you can fairly easily earn yourself 400 to 500k per hour while also training runecrafting, which is nice. And once you get access to more agility shortcuts, the giant runecrafting pouch, you'll get at level 75 runecrafting, stuff like that, you can earn up to 700k per hour crafting double cosmic runes, which is pretty good for the level. Now, bossing in the lower levels isn't generally recommended if you're just trying to make as much money as possible. However, there are a few bosses you could try if you want to take more of a bossing approach. One of the more popular ones is Sarachnus. Now, the bare minimum requirements, in my opinion, is at least level 70 attack and defense. That will get you access to the Sarachnus Cudgel, which is a very good crush weapon, as well as Kirill's, which you're going to need to tank up all of the spiders. Beyond that, you can just get away with generally decent mid-game gear such as a Dragon Defender, a Helm of Nita's Knot, Dragon Boots, and a Berserker Ring, and you should be totally fine to start getting some kills. And what's kind of nice about Sarachnus is, as you get better gear, as your stats get higher, your kills per hour are going to start going up, and thus your money per hour. And because Sarachnus spawns nearly instantly after death, the amount of kills per hour here can go up quite a bit. Now the boss fight itself is very simple, you just need to protect from melee when Seractus is within melee distance, and whenever Seractus runs away, protect from ranged. All the other attacks will just be tanked by your armor. At lower defense levels, you could consider killing the minions that spawn, as they do end up doing a bit of damage when your defenses are lower. For example, on my Hardcore Ironman account, I do end up having to do this, but that's because my setup is, well, not ideal. As you get stronger, you can just straight up ignore them. 
Now the money you can make per hour at Seractus is going to start off somewhat low but will grow over time as you get better gear. If you can get at least 20 kills per hour at Seractus, you're looking to make around 400k per hour around that. But the amount of money you can make can scale up to even 700 or 800k per hour as you get more kills. Uh, so realistically is one of your best bets if you want to make money in the mid game from bossing. Now probably one of the best mid game money makers consistently is the Blast Furnace. You can get access to it pretty easily and you can make significant amounts of money per hour even as a mid level. For example smithing mithril bars which only has a requirement of 50 smithing can earn you 900k per hour right now. And smithing admin bars, which only has a smithing requirement of 70, can earn you 1.2 mil per hour. Now, the one requirement that does take a while is getting access to a coal bag. It'll actually probably take you longer to get the coal bag than it will for you to get 50 or even maybe 70 smithing. As the only way to get the coal bag is to get 100 gold nuggets from Motherload Mine, which can take quite a while. Uh, that said, it is easily worth doing because you can make so much money from it and is a great way to fund your account while also training smithing at the same time. Other soft requirements would be getting ice gloves and a full graceful set, but those are not required. Uh, so the run is very simple. Essentially, you're going to fill up your coal bag with a full inventory of coal and then withdraw a full inventory of mithril. From there, you're going to run over to the blast furnace, empty both of those into the furnace, let those do its thing and run back to your bank and withdraw another full inventory of coal, put that in a coal bag and then withdraw another inventory of coal. So then you're going to go ahead and empty that into the furnace. From there you can go ahead and claim 27 mithril bars, run back to your bank, check those in the bank, and then you're going to run back with one inventory of coal and one inventory of mithril. Once you've emptied those into the blast furnace, run back, claim your bars, and then you've done pretty much a full run. Essentially you're just going to repeat that over and over and over again, and you're going to earn a lot of money. Now if you are really strapped for cash in the mid-level, an easy way to make money is by making unfinished potions. Generally, I wouldn't recommend doing this, mainly because you don't get any experience for doing it. That said, making unfinished potions is a very easy and consistent way to make money. Now to make unfinished potions, you need herblore levels. The higher herblore level you have, the more unfinished potions you have access to. Uh, generally, if you can get around 40 or 50 herblore, you can get access to most of the most profitable unfinished potions to make. Uh, some of the better potions you get access to at even lower levels are Renar potions you can make. Toad Flax potions have very low requirements, but keep in mind the amount of money you can make doing this varies quite a bit depending on the day. Personally, I wouldn't bother doing it for anything less than 500k per hour, and that's mainly because you aren't getting experience for doing it, which means beyond the money, it is kind of a waste of time. That said, it's very simple to do. All you have to do is withdraw 14 of the herbs you're going to turn into unfinished potions, 14 vials of water, combine them together and repeat. Easy money, but no experience. Now next up here we have probably one of the most classic money makers in the entire game and it's really stuck around throughout the years. That would be stringing you longbows. Even today, stringing you longbows provides a decent hourly profit while also giving you a really solid amount of fletching experience per hour. Compared to these other money makers, this one's skewed a little bit more as a training method, but it still provides a good amount of both money and experience. Now to get access to you longbows, you need 70 fletching, which will not really take that long. Fletching is a really quick skill to train. And at the current rates, you're going to get around 200k per hour profit, which while is quite a bit lower than some of these other methods, you're also going to get nearly 200k fletching experience per hour, uh, which means you're going to start flying through fletching levels as well. So if you're looking for a really easy way to make money while also getting probably one of the easiest 99s in the entire game, simply stringing you longbows is a really good way to go. At current rates, if you did this all the way to 99, you would earn yourself around 13 to 15 mil, uh, which isn't half bad. Now, interestingly enough, I think the best boss to kill at a mid-level for profit could actually be the giant mole. The giant mole is kind of like the Zalra of lower level accounts. I mean, you're, it's just very consistent money per hour. You're not relying on any big rare drops or anything. It's just every drop is going to be worth roughly somewhere around 15 to 20k. And you just bang off as many kills as possible. Now the reason giant mole is so profitable is because of the mole claws and mole skins, which you can turn in for bird nests, which hold a lot of value. Now the giant mole is fairly easy to kill and the boss fight itself is dead easy. However, to get an efficient amount of kills per hour, there are a few baseline requirements I would recommend. First up here, you definitely want to have access at least to the Durox armor set. 
as realistically you should at least have 70 attack, strength, and defense at the bare minimum. On top of that you'll also need 43 prayer. And finally here, probably the biggest requirement of all is going to be the Falador Hard Diary to get access to the Falador Shield 3. This is required to locate the mole. Without this you won't know where the mole is and you're going to be running around a lot just looking for him whenever he disappears. You can do it without this of course, but your kills per hour are going to go down significantly. Other than that though, you just need a way to bring your health down, for example a Dwarven Rock Cake, a Locator Orb, those are probably the two most popular ones and you're pretty much good to go. So the boss fight is dead easy, you first want to just get your hit points as low as possible, so use the Orb of the Rock Cake to go down to 1 HP. From there you're going to have Protect from Meleon or else you're going to, well, immediately die. And then you're just going to go absolutely to town on the Giant Mole. Uh, once you've lowered his health enough, he's going to disappear and go to another location in the cave. That said, if you have the Falador Hard Diaries done, you will know exactly where he's gone. Once you've killed him, you'll pick up the drops, which all should be noted if you've done the Falador Hard Diary. From there you just repeat. The Giant Mole can earn you a fair bit of money per hour, up to around 700k right now, while also getting fairly decent melee combat experience per hour, making it a pretty good way to train and make some solid money in the mid game. Now another really classic way to make money with magic in the mid game is charging air orbs. This has been a good money maker for a long time now and continues to be. There is one requirement to charge air orbs and that would be 66 magic. A bit of a higher requirement but realistically that won't take you too long. Charging air orbs can earn you around 400k per hour right now in profit while also training your magic as well. Granted it's not one of the quickest magic training methods in the game but you can still earn yourself around 35k per hour in magic which is decent enough and it will add up over time. Now for stuff you want to bring with you, really only two things, an amulet of glory and a staff of air. Don't bring anything else equipped, it's just not worth it. As you are running into the wilderness for this, there is a chance you could die, so just don't bring anything else that's not necessary. Uh, so in your inventory you're going to bring 27 unpowered orbs and 81 cosmic runes per trip. Please do not bring a giant stack of cosmic runes, just it's not worth it. Just set your withdraw X to 81 and withdraw the cosmic runes and then the unpowered orb every time. Very easy and you will have zero to lose then. So the run is very simple, you're just going to start from the Edville Bank. You're going to run south down into the Edville Dungeon. From there you're going to run all the way up to the north until you hit the Wilderness Sign. Enter the Wilderness, continue running up to the northwest, pass through another gate and then further up to the northwest and then you'll find a ladder that will bring you up to the surface. Once you're up to the surface just cast your Charge Air spell. And then you're pretty much good to AFK there for about a minute. Once all your orbs have been charged, teleport back to Edgeville with your Amulet of Glory and repeat. It's very easy, pretty AFK, and while you might occasionally die, it's just not worth worrying about too much. If somebody kills you, hop to a different world and just continue on. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Obviously there are a ton of other mid-game moneymakers out there, but those are some of the ones that I think are easier, more profitable, or more accessible for mid-game accounts. Thanks for watching guys, as always, and I will see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thanks so much to Sejuani's Flail, The Hybrid, Guy Fox, Timothy Chen, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys, it honestly means so much. You guys are willing to support me that much. Thank you. Also a giant thank you to Base Titch, Mexos, NDM001, and YoYoSub89 for being subscribed at the Runite Tier. As always, if you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. Mainly you'll be immortalized in all of my future videos, but you also get a custom role in my Discord server as well as access to my video release schedule. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you next time.